Okay, today we'll be talking about angular velocity and angular acceleration. So how do we describe the rate at which displacement is changing or occurring? Well, with linear velocity, we use the average velocity, uh, which was the displacement per unit of time. And this would be the displacement in a straight line over the time. So how do we describe it with angular displacement? Well, it would be the same thing. We would actually use angular velocity. So in other words, if we're trying to figure out how fast this displacement occurred, we would have to know how much displacement there was over the time period it occurred. So here's the actual formal definition of angular velocity. Now once again, this is the average angular velocity. Um, all you would do is take the angular displacement and divide it by time. This is the symbol. It's omega. It means angular velocity. The line above it means average. And really what we're doing is we're just taking the displacement, dividing by the time. And that would give us the angular velocity. So what units would it be in? Radians per second, because Displacement, angular displacement is radians, time is in seconds. All right, let's look at an example. We have a gymnast. Um, he's on a high bar and swims through two revolutions in a time of 1.9 seconds. And what we need to do is find the average velocity of the gymnast. First, we need to convert. Um, revolutions into radians because all these equations require that we use radians not revolutions not degrees okay so our displacement would be two revolutions and we use our conversion that one revolution is the same thing as two pi radians and we come up uh, 12.6 radians now why is it negative because he's going clockwise and by convention clockwise is negative. So now we can easily throw it into our equation. Uh, the average angular velocity would be equal to the displacement, negative 12.6 radians over the time, and you come up with negative 6.6 .6 radians per second. All right. Remember we talked about instantaneous velocity, uh, linear velocity, and we talked about what that was, was the velocity over time, but as delta t approached zero, we would come up with what's called the instantaneous velocity, or the velocity at that instant. And the same idea could be used for angular velocity. The instantaneous angular velocity would be the change in radians per unit of time as delta t approaches zero. So you see a lot of analogies so far between linear and angular. So how do we describe the rate at which velocity is changing? Well, that would be acceleration or linear acceleration. And the expression we used before was acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. So how can we describe angular velocity? Now, excuse me, how angular velocity is changing? Well, we use angular acceleration. The changing angular velocity means that angular acceleration is occurring. So let's define what angular acceleration is. And once again, this would be an average. It would be the change of angular velocity over the elapsed period of time. So this is alpha, meaning angular acceleration. And the line above it, once again, again means average. So that would be the change in angular velocity over time. And the units would be radians per second squared. Because omega, or angular velocity, is measured in radians per second, divided by seconds again, so you get radians per second squared. All right, so let's look at an example. We have a jet engine that's speeding up. Um, as you see from the front of the engine, the flam, excuse me, fan bit blades are rotating with an angular speed of negative 110 radians per second. And they increase speed, or they accelerate, up to negative 330 radians per second in a time of 14 seconds. Now, hopefully you remember that the negative means that it's going clockwise. 
and we want to find the angular acceleration and we assume it to be constant. So we'd use our equation that average angular acceleration would be equal to the change in angular velocity over time. And we take the final speed minus the initial speed divided by the time and we come up with the angular acceleration of negative 16 radians per second squared. Hopefully you've seen throughout this video that there's analogies between linear and angular um, terms such as velocity, acceleration, and displacement.